continuing in our tradition of bringing you our Levity Zone salons held in beautiful Ojai, California, we convened a spirited group on a hilltop off Villanova Drive with breathtaking views of the surrounding desert mountains, oak forests, and the Theosophy Society across the valley. The group assembled around the meal table in Johann's outdoor Temple of Integrity that evening in September 2013 took on the big theme. What is the highest purpose of humanity? Join us now as the group dials into discussion of our deepest origins in time, bringing a new myth to the extant world, alien abduction visions, Burning Man as a Vehicle for Ascension, The Thinking of Joseph Campbell, Simply Existing in the Present, and much more. We started with a member of the salon explaining how the caterpillar dissolves and then, using a few surviving imaginal discs, forms a new body and emerges as a butterfly. This metaphor for transformation threaded through the entire evening. Let us now join Golan, Alali, Ingrid, Johan, Emmanuel, Andros, Natalie, David, Beth, Saul, Rebecca, and yours truly, Dr. Bruce. Whatever it is, so right now, like just because I live in such a beautiful town that people are so freaking nice and <laughs> taking their time and, you know, very nice to each other, it's like... When I came over here, I thought, man, it's fake. They were like fake, like LA people, no? <laughs> LA people, they always like smile, hi, how are you? But here in Ohio, it's, man, it's real. No, I mean, we're mostly. We're, 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 <laughs> listen, you know, we're real up to our own extent, you know, like if, just if you be nice and you give me a hug and you make me feel good, mean or don't mean this, it's great, you know? And just go out like right now to the world and say, hey, we know something that others may not know. And we want to take them to our force. We need to create a story. We need to create like some sort of a legend, something that will you bring, know, a new mythology. bring people because they're like so stuck. You know, like we're open, we're liberal, we're we're free-minded. We can see, we can think different. So, but go like into those places that they're really not. <laughs> so her story of the of the chrysalis, the caterpillar going into the chrysalis and dissolving and coming out as a new being as a butterfly is that how do you tell that story to the world about transformation how do you tell the story to the world that we're all the same and it doesn't matter if you're blonde or if you're Chinese or if you're Israeli or if you're French or if you're whatever you are and you don't hold the truth the truth is just living you know we're also (laughs) living that story on 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 a major basis I mean I think we're we as a as a world culture are starting to understand that, you know, as we continuously give our power away to these small majority of people, you know, we're we're starting to realize that that we don't need the nation state anymore. We're living in a time where the nation state is going to disappear because it's irrelevant. I mean, it, we we can build <coughs> systems without without the need of going through those systems. I mean, it's all about it's going to be about self reliance. I I, I want to believe in that. But I believe that it's only in small communities that realize that we could make our own food. And those communities are getting bigger. In yeah. in what scale? Well, in I, scale again, of, in scale of California, in the scale no, of in, in what scale? Okay. Worldwide. Uh, I'm I'm a permaculture designer. Beautiful. And in a couple of weeks is the international permaculture convergence in Cuba this year. Nice. Ah. <laughs> I know. So. Um, that's where you get a sense of what are the real issues where um, and also how simple the solutions are. I mean, even listening to Johan earlier saying, could we just direct the armies that are already in place and turn them um, towards building utopia? <laughs> Permaculture de- believes that the problem is the solution. <laughs> So it's really not actually that hard to just reapply things on the one hand. It's not, it's not small. It's a bunch of areas around the edge of the center popping up and soon moving into the center really fast. It will happen really fast. 
And I don't think it needs a big overarching story because even listening to you describe it, you said we need to come up with a story, a new mythology. And I think part of what's coming out of that chrysalis, Mm -hmm. that cocoon, is actually shedding the need for mythology itself. So we may not need an overarching story for people to grab onto to change anything. I think there's just an awakening where people are like, that doesn't work for me. I don't see how how I, this um, can not just be sustained but regenerated again and again. This is a death path. This is a life path. And people are just choosing one or the other. Absolutely. There's a sort of natural thing that will emerge that I don't think requires the any mytholo- more mythology. The mythology that I was talking about is not for us because we already know or we already feel. Yeah, for mm-hmm. It's for the ones that are so deep, far, you know, like you're talking about your being and yeah. you feel like you're in 2013, mm-hmm. but the other beings are like at right about 1800 or 17 or 1600s in mm-hmm. their mind. Yeah, still in Israel. And therefore... But, and oh, no, and bring therefore, we were, they, no, 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 bring they were... No, 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 they were... And therefore, like, growing their own food. And <laughs> exactly, but you see, but, 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 but that is They're what I'm talking... They're not trapped in that time. They're yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about... Like we have a lot of, you know, we're fortunate to live in heaven, you know, which is the United States that gives us mm-hmm. the good and the bad of, of to choose, mm-hmm. you know, of what is right and what is wrong and give us the freedom to express and to, you know, to do whatever we feel mm-hmm. is right and whatever, you know, uh, mm-hmm. but, but the majority part of the world, if you're talking about Asia and if you're talking about a lot Asia, of the Middle Asia. East and a lot about Africa, these are people that are not even you know like they're like many many generations behind you mm-hmm. in order to pull them up you know I, I don't know if it's the right thing but I believe that maybe they'll need some sort of a, because that's how they program they're programmed for a, a god for a saver for this for that so we can help them you know to come into our sense into our how do you well, I, I would, how do you pull them out of their cons- mm-hmm. drive for consumerism, for example? So I don't know. The universal First, religion. I wonder though if the pulling them out isn't like pulling the butterfly out of the chrysalis that actually weakens and distorts the whole thing. That people that have an people internal strength that yeah. their yeah. own awakening is their own process. Because maybe they come up with the next you new know, thing that we so, never so let of. me go let me go back, you know, like I deal like right now with, with some really antique stuff and, and are we trying to figure out what people think four, five, six thousand years before Christ. And we're trying to say like, are we going, are we advancing time? Are we going back in time, you know, with our knowledge, with our powers? <laughs> and what seems to be, it seems to be that when we were, you know, humans, you know, when we were right at the beginning, we were able like to communicate and we were able like to do some things and transfer information from one to another Telepathy. without even saying a word. Mm-hmm. So we didn't need like much words or with much power to communicate like with each other. Mm-hmm. You know, there is pyramids all around the world and they've been pretty much built at the same time, but they're so far apart from each other. Why would they build the same structure, you know, at the same time? And how did information pass, you know, from one, you know, from one area to the other? So what I'm trying to say is, is that we've been, in, in, my, in, in my understanding, is that we've been at that high spiritually uh, evolved when we came just to earth and we've been drawing like into what we call today the western world which is a lot of goodies and comfort and this and that and and we lost a lot of a lot of connection a lot of powers that we have animals can tell when earthquake is coming 10 10 to 15 to 20 seconds before and you're just going to sit down and just like, oh, it's happening. Bruce has a really interesting mm. theory about this and our our involvement in in the snake, you know, and how how we reacted to the snake when we were evolving. You wanna, can, can you riff on that? Like, you want to hear that story? What's that? <laughs> yeah, should I review? Should I review that? Yeah, that? totally. That's because it's so. That is yeah, so yeah. fascinating. It's yeah, a yeah. visionary story. Um, so my my practice is kind of a shamanic practice and then I go in and out of different communities I design spacecraft and missions for NASA I I do or work in the origin of life field and I do shamanic journeys not as a shaman but as a as a a journeyer um, in different fields and one of them is about the origin of the human mind about the origin of the visionary experience 
And I was reading an article um, about a year ago where they scientists had found a 55 million year old femur bone, a leg bone. 55 million years. It was it was the ancestor of all of us, all the monkeys and all the lemurs and all the apes and everything came from the common ancestor. And what that means is that we actually were around even before the dinosaurs were wiped out by the collision at Chichlub, the impact at Chichlub. So can you imagine, we were living as insectivores. Our common ancestor was an insectivore living on tree limbs in the rainforest. And what our diet was, was we chewed up leaves and flowers we hunted insects, and a dragonfly was a major kill. It was a major operation because we were only about two, three inches long. And we sucked tree sap basically to get high, <laughs> tree sap that would form on, on these branches. So I had a flash insight or vision of a story of what was life like for our common ancestor. Because you can study insectivores now, and they all have the same life pattern. And <laughs> our lives were... We lived in these balls of security where we held each other, kind of like we're doing around this table. We're kind of close for warmth and for safety. After the dinosaur impact, there were no flighted creatures for a long time. Uh, birds didn't quite fill the niche. The, they were the only survivors of the, the dinosaur extinction. So the greatest enemy of, of our kind was this tree snake, the sole... Uh, predator of us. So you can imagine the young teenage pre-hominid, pre-monkey, pre-lemur deciding to sneak away from the ball, the sleeping ball, in the cavity and walk along the limb to get at that globe of tree sap and suck it down to get high, <laughs> not get busted. So she she goes along the limb and she's sucking it down. She's looking back so she doesn't get busted by the authorities for going and, <laughs> and taking it without sharing. Um, and she looks forward and in her binocular vision, in her little totally tiny eyes, she was the first creature to see in 3D in color. She was the first creature through which the rainforest saw what it was. The madre could see her own self in the mirror. We were the first. And we were the first that the madre could see the stars, too. And so she's looking forward along the branch, and the dawn has come, and she sees this, this blotchy color pattern that gets more and more resolved. And she gets completely hooked on this pattern. And this is the tree snake. And the tree snake has co-evolved for 20 million years along with her and her kind to trick her, to mesmerize her. And while she's getting mesmerized, she's sucking down her tree sap and she's getting really stimulated by the snake pattern, the head of the snake is moving under the branch and up and is going to snap her down. And this, this dance has been going on for 20 million years. <laughs> and so her visionary sense of, of pattern and color uh, has been evolving along with this for 20 million. That's a long time. And so the, the mother or the mother of everything, of evolution, has created this mechanism. And this is, I believe, the source of the visionary state and also uh, tech. So why are we, you know, stuck looking at our smartphones? We're totally mesmerized by colored pixel patterns. We are total suckers for it, more than any other animal. And I think that the tech is the serpent. It is the snake in the modern era. No <laughs> and we're still sucking down the tree sap. We still have a burger, fries, and shake diet. And we're still in this dance with tech. And the tech is is snap is going to eat our ass if we're not careful but it's our it's our driver so that's perhaps a new story or a new myth that comes from this this world so i'm getting the vision of an aerobos right the snake consuming its own tail right so creation is looking at itself well it forgets that it is the serpent right mm. and so technology is us it's just a reflection of us. of us like the internet is our internet you know it's our ability it's this it's a very rude crude like state of our evolution but yet it's way more than we were and 
it's going to reveal to us that the human body and nature is the most epic biological technology ever created. Like, <laughs> this is... Techn this is, is technology at its height. The the perfect <laughs> marriage of tech and our vision and our body and is is in our future. One of the things I'm going to Peru in about three weeks, and if and of course this won't happen. No, nothing ever happens the way you plan it. But I want to in, to have a conversation with the madre, and I want to tell her, madre, your best laid plan, which is that you allowed us through the impact of, that you ordered to get rid of the dinosaurs. We were the chosen. We survived 10,000 bolide impacts from a five-mile meteorite impact and that burned the forest. I don't, what were you thinking kind of thing? But we made it, and here's the deal. Your network is going dark. The network of eye contact of all of us little critters in the ball, making that eye contact, that intense network like we're doing right now when we're looking at each other, you're losing it because even our young are being trained by the snake to look at this screen and they can't look in the eye anymore. And she's counting on that network to power us into vision, to power us into ascension. And I'm going to say, Mama, you've got competition. Yeah, actually, because yeah. the, the reason why is I actually believe that, that this technology that we're building is an external structure in the same way that like bees will build a hive. We're building this external network that we've spent the last 10,000 years kind of moving towards. And I think that, that ultimately the reason why we're so obsessed with it is because somewhere in our coding we are actually building the structure to put inside of us. We want, we want it inside of us. We want to be able to interconnect with each other in a way that we have telepathy again. And I think that at some juncture, we're mm. going to be able to mm -hmm. s literally switch on our DNA and connect to artificial intelligence in such a way that Definitely. that once we get to that level, the technology will no longer be needed. Mm -hmm. And the artificial intelligence we're communing with is going to be really the divine. <coughs> so I, I, I think that, that we're on this path to, to make the... Like, yeah. we're standing on the scaffolding now of if, this giant... Uh, and of, of course, those of us who've been in, in journey space find the telepathy alive and well so much so you know, that you know, it's beyond I, imagining I met this woman uh, through Ingrid this, uh, her name is Mary Mary Delgado mm -hmm. Miriam Delgado uh, Miriam Delgado and she was um, abducted abducted by yeah. aliens or by other force of beings and obviously I looked at her and I was like man you're crazy <laughs> you need to get a doctor or something. I mean, because you're like, the and, and Ingrid both. called me up. So I'm like, you gotta pick her up from the airport, and you gotta, you know. So I spent with her like for 24 hours, and as much as she spoke, everything she spoke was like, man, out of this world. It's completely insane, <laughs> but it makes sense. She said, you know, God created God or whatever you want to call it, created like this earth or this 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 life vibrant thing um, many many times mm -hmm. and first time it, it was a play it was a play of of earth and some vegetation and then he got bored because you know vegetation and it didn't, didn't make much to him then he added like more animals or and therefore there was like you know the, the, the dinosaurs time and and you know back then it was like you know okay they, they ain't getting nowhere with that then he created Mm. Man, mm -hmm. human, and and every other time, and, and all this information that she brings from, she brings it, you know, from from where she yeah, was, you know, from from the the for third me. and fourth and fifth fifth dimensions, you know, like. And and as much as I thought she's crazy, is like as much as I'm talking to her, I'm like, you know, it makes sense, you know, it really really makes sense. And what it is, it's life and creation is a play. There is no where to go. Mm. There is no. God, if, if if God or if this biggest power, if he, if you have that kind of power, he can put this power into us and we can be exactly what he wants to. It's probably not it. What it is, it's a challenge. It's what it, you know, it's just, he puts some more ingredients like into this thing and you want to see like how does it grow. And when it grows bad, you know, it's just take off this part that is bad. So if the dinosaurs were like too vicious or too 
not working with nature, they're gone. They're not here with us. And human, we're probably getting very close to where the dinosaur were. Or we're about to have a major awakening. We're, we're Most about likely. To be most likely, and well, is, we're, me- we're meant to do that. I mean, I, I, we're I mixed think, of many I, I DNAs think, through, from. Well, that's Miriam, my point of through view. Through Miriam, it wasn't like meant. There was just a play. It's a play of. Yeah, because she sees it as a native. She works with native it's, Indians. Yeah, but it's and a, she's a, one of exactly, the speakers so of the whole piece. So, so she sees it like mm-hmm. that, and I understand. So if it so if it is a play of creation, that that means that, you know, whatever comes, if it's technology, if it's human, if it's whatever it is. We cannot overcome this power. What she says is that the different, because there's different beings out of space. The ones that she encountered were the tall, the the tall blondes. That's how she calls them. <laughs> and supposedly, in in, in in this planet, it's a mixture of different DNAs. And this one in particular, Gaia, was uh, this goddess woman that gave like the energy. For this planet that's why it's supposedly quote-unquote it's a very special a uh, uh, planet because mm-hmm. many dna was put together to for them for for this uh, uh, the uh, let's say um the dna supposedly were different extra uh, brothers and sisters from outer space sorry and depending if we grow up if we ascend if we get higher if we understand the whole deal they will get to a higher level of understanding exactly and that's what, what she what talks does, about what does our ascension look like what does our looks like burning man does it I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. after Everybody said it looks like very much. But, 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 but what she was saying is that she was saying that there is no power stronger than nature so if you feel that you can have the biggest atomic bomb that can blow the whole no way and if you think that you can shape if you can change the shape of earth there's no way that's that means that it's a play we're playing we're it's a game you know at, at burning man this year was you know, it was just there a week and a half ago it was astounding to me because on monday night uh if if you've been to burning man you notice that Usually the highest energy happens after the man's burned and fall, yeah. and there's this incredible high energy. It was started on Monday night, yeah. that high energy, and it it carried through. And I, we were walking around dumbfounded by the the machinery of of turned onness and ho- the height of it. Yeah. And it went every single night. And then when the man burned, the field collapsed after, and it, it collapsed from that point on. So the Burning Man's undergone a phase change. Mm-hmm. It's something else now. Mm-hmm. It's not just that it's 68,000 people and yes. there's more art cars. Something happened this year. Yes. Well, I, I felt that happening last year. And, and to tell you, like in like I mentioned, I, when I first went, there was like 10,000 people there. And and so to and, and that was it. You go to Burning Man, you go there for like you know the week, and that's it. And, and yeah, it really ramps up. So, like, Monday it's kind of dead. Tuesday it's a little more alive. By Thursday it's kind of switched on. And then by Saturday night it's, like, fully going. But this year it's like, yeah, by Monday it's on. And there was more people on Monday night than there were, you know, f- five years ago mm-hmm. uh, for the entire height of the event. And and it it it's just um, it's just astounding how big it's getting. And the rise of the West Coast Festival movement. And, and then you know, wa- walking, the walking through there, I kind of had an epiphany moment. I was walking with my friend, and there was this fifty-foot-high, curving wave stage. I mean, with the, the DJs were like forty-five feet up, mm-hmm. and there was enormous projection screens and people dancing. I said, "How can this be happening in America?" And my friend turned to me and she said. I don't know what America you're from, but this is my America. Right. This is a trillion dollars of Silicon Valley mind and muscle and, and creativity. And then I said, how in human history, just this one dance space alone, has there been something as powerful? And this is a very wise woman, and she, she turned to me and she said, yes, this came before there was a scene that was this powerful. And... Uh, it was in Mexico, 
there were priests standing on a pyramid and they had executed 8,000 people and there was blood flowing down the steps of the pyramid and they were they lit up the whole thing. That was as powerful as this, yeah. but it had a different energy. And I thought, oh, that's, exactly. whoa. Exactly. So, and you know, you think about this. I mean, like I last year, I, uh, I, I was fortunate enough to have my trip paid for by this guy who was the presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party and he's a, he's a Fortune 500 CEO and he, he calls me last year out of the blue and I didn't think I was going to go to Burning Man. I didn't have the means, but I knew that I couldn't collapse that reality and, and if I wanted to go, then something would happen. And sure enough, the Friday before the event, this guy I knew who owns this Fortune 500 company calls me up and he says, uh, Hey Andros, I, I just rented the biggest RV I can find. How much do I have to pay you to be my personal assistant to take me to Burning Man? I'll pay for everything. Wow. And I was like, it's going to cost you a thousand bucks. And he's like, great. So <laughs> I got paid to go to Burning Man last year. Good it was job. amazing. And so, but, but the point is, is that this guy is like very, very influential. And, and he had no idea. And, and I, uh, there was this huge whiteout. And I said, I'm going to take you out on a, on a bike ride to the temple in the whiteout. And he came back and he was just never the same. And, and he has amazing influence. And this year, uh, P. Diddy, who's like a kind of a, you know, he's a famous and very influential music producer. He went to Burning Man for the first time and, and he came back and he was like, my life will never be the same. Talking about yeah. Pop Daddy. He, yeah, who's oh now P. God. Diddy. And Mark Zuckerberg went out there uh, to look at this giant effigy that was built for Facebook and then burned to the ground. The, and like, so, the huge like sculpture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, you've got you've got the people who who uh, you know the people who created uh, Google go out there. People and I met influencing a, stuff. Yeah, and I met really a Twitter scientist. So, so isn't it strengthening the the, the 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 essence of there is no there is no goal for creation. Creation is you know like us part of what we're doing there's no goal for it it's just it's just changing it's just moving all the time I mean it's there's no I mean I mean think about where we are what we do where we want to evolve do we have a goal well yeah we do we have what, what is the, Listen, what, what, what the what goal is, we, the goal is the goal? interconnectedness the goal is and the once 2%. you get into interconnectedness yeah. the goal is and the once 2% you get, that isn't planned out somebody said what is what does the future progress. look like and, 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 and I think and, we already once, know once you get into this future like that is whatever it is that it's going to be a different one but we're constantly projecting the future and then letting us reel it in to, towards it I mean look I'm, at, I'm, look I'm at the not, industrial revolution I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not I'm not you know counter that well, what I'm trying like to say is the that greatest it's, fulfillment of your life exactly that's what, what is it? it is it's just is about it? exploring yeah. living life like what's the most fulfilling thing that's ever ever happened in your whole life it is and then it's different and then, and then it, it is, changes. And then it's different. Yeah, I see your point. Then it is, and then it's but, different. Um, so, there, so there is no. Yeah, for sure. But then will be different challenges. Yeah, exactly. We talk about it the whole time. Exactly. So there's nowhere I mean, really to go. The only thing is there's just to share. So think about the biggest power, the the master power, the the god, the the. the you know, if if they have so much power, they could have direct us to where we want to go. But it's not about where we want to go. It's where we are going to go. Right. What we're gonna, what, what we are gonna create, what we're gonna do, what, what we're creating th- now. Exactly. What are we gonna, what, what do we want in this life? And it's just. Well, it's the same thing that people from the East Coast, when they were moving out west, when there was the big westward ho movement in the 1800s, and the railroads were being built and the wagon trains were coming out this way. What were those people doing? Exactly. They were coming out west because they they, they felt something pulling them to, as, to a as, better state of being. As this and is they exactly. put all this effort and they built all this stuff and the Industrial Revolution fueled That's this. The we got life. out here. They had no idea when they were building railroads that ultimately in a hundred years it was going to turn into internet. That is the essence of life. That's what I'm trying to say. That there is no... So yeah, but the there's not a certain there's not a certain place we want to go to. So are we on a good are we on the the path, good path? Yes, yeah. we're on a good path. We're always a good, on a good path because because Mother Nature and Earth and on and, and and the biggest power is always in control. What about the, the powers that were the powers that be there that were? Excuse um, me. What do you say? Well, what about the the island of plastic the size of Texas in the ocean? It's there well, to make us aware. No, nothing that nothing like, that nothing everything that we do in that's my my belief it's not you know 
my belief is that anything and everything them, and anything that everything we do <laughs> yeah, cannot enjoy really enjoy every what about moment. That? What about every that? Every second. <laughs> enjoy it. Get the inspiration of it. Yeah, Inspire enjoy each other to moment. be. We cannot, we cannot hurt this big thing. Oh, we can't. No. No, but we're awakening to put these uh, uh, people that are in power for now because they're not going to be there anymore. We're awakening to tell them, thank you very much for your time, but this is time for us to step in as a unity, as a community, as a one force. And imagine the amazing team that we can make when the walls are going to come down. The best, let, let's put together the some 10 cool cars and the best people will come together from around the world and make like ten, like a line of 10 cars and then the scientists from around the world and like this we're not going to fight of who's going to go to Phobos of, uh, of the ancient spaceship that Mars has as a moon quote unquote but you, 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 you know what I'm talking about it, that, that is the peak of the moment and when that will happen then we'll have different problems because we're going to be so awakened and we're going to share technology with our brothers and sisters and then we will have different challenges. But definitely it's to wake up, that's, that's like phase number one because we have spoke about all the dimensions and all of these things. We're just in diapers. We're just like waking up to the mm -hmm. reality, interdimensional beings that we are. Because okay. yeah. we have a okay, big so, scheme on the so, universe so getting back to of where the we, cosmos. So getting back to where we started, we started where, where humans or, or human thousands and thousands of years ago used to have certain powers and certain connections. And we've been away from that we still have them we just forgot them. exactly but now to get back to it oh, it's not weak. a matter of like it's not they're a matter of a practice mm -hmm. it's like if you used to be able to do Cirque du Soleil performance but you didn't train in 20 years exactly in, in thousands and you of wouldn't years. be able to you wouldn't be able to do anything like that you'd be able to you'd you know maybe you would strength. maybe you'd get winded to go up a hill those hours are relatively <laughs> weakened in us right now and feeble I, 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 I agree with you. I just feel that it will take hundreds and thousands no, of years for yeah. us to no, get back. No, 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 no. I think no. we're there already. We mm. are accelerating mm. so fast. And mm. we're, while we're inspiring each other, we're, we're going to do this the double. Like, yeah. once we're waking up, it's joint. like yeah. the, the memory Excellent. that we have okay, inside so, is so gonna going to turn back, on the switch. So going back to where I started. So we'll get, reflect. So, so getting back to where I started, when I started with Samara or Samastra. What Samsara. Was Samsara. Samsara. My friend Jason. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so getting back to the Samsara. Samsara. So I want to see, I want to see like, you know, like this awakening in, in human beings that is going to be as strong as religion. Have you been to Burning Man? Yeah, of course well, I've the, been. The thing, I what, really is, what is 50,000 people the that pay? The what, what is 50,000? to down and everybody what, what is, needs to be free on, to travel. Down. And on, then they is, will realize the What is 50,000 people or 70,000 people that do it for a week? I'm talking to you about millions and millions of people that do it every day. And it's happening. Right? I understand. I understand you know, that. And so, so what I'm saying is like, you know, for us to really go to the next vision, to the next level, is to go ahead and really not make work here in Ojai or in the West world mm -hmm. is to make what we what, what our vision is to do it like in the places where they're like really far away from that which is uh, Far East you know Africa no, make them far. believe in those yeah. things because so, for us you know we're, we're close to it we're, well, it's very easy for us to transfer information from one to another mm -hmm. because we're open they're but that's not. why we're doing the, the zones of radiant light communities mm -hmm. because we're going to far places from the, peop from the place that we know and building these communities and by being there, being nest, you're trans transcending, what trans what transmitting this own onzas para dar el amor y que la gente one, se despierte give us one give me one community <laughs> <laughs> one community I was just about to say that <laughs> listen my friend <laughs> listen my friend history, <laughs> history is always and, and that's something that I always told Ingrid you know and, and maybe because I come from a very long chain of 4,000 years of no that's truth. what you think no 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 I don't think maybe you were a black guy in Africa no no no, no I, don't, I don't think I know I come from a 4,000 years tradition that has been maybe. going from one to another, from the, from the other. 
And those are the ones to survive the good and the worst in, in this world. And that's how you judge a community. What kind of a community do we have here in this earth today that we could say that could, st could sustain more than a hundred years, brother? I'm not talking to you about 50, <clears throat> 20, 30. hundred years. Of? Zero. Of what? None. None no, lost. Well, I would no, tell no, you. I, I, no, 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 my friend. Beautiful. Okay, not even, this not is a little one. bit hard for no, you, no, Holly. No, no, it's not I even. Mean, not, not, I'm not talking. A, I'm not. I'm not talking out of. We don't know. I'm not. No, no, I'm not talking well, about of me. Really I'm is. talking about right about of the world, worldwide. Give me a one community. Yeah, but we don't. Okay. If, uh, well, sorry, like in this subject, it's a little bit hard because I'm like trying to get one another. I can get one. Go for it. In Vietnam, there is a beautiful. My favorite example is something called a food forest. Okay. Their food system is not these row crops, monocultured, sprayed, pesticide, genetically modified, that is standing, producing more than it did, that's 300 years old. It's a self-regenerative um, system. Nice. So you can walk into this organism and not even realize that what you're walking into is a huge oasis of food. And... Food, medicine, building materials, fibers. 300 years old, it's in Vietnam, it's going now. There are 100 year old things. So it, um, there are these communities that have found ways of not just sustaining themselves, but regenerating, meaning creating a surplus that then becomes part of the wealth that's gifted, like the beehive he was talking about. It becomes gifted as, uh, as an infrastructure to the next generation. So they, these do exist. It's just I, we're I, not as familiar I, with I, them. What about like I creation? I mean, like you get it, like the you getting back to like the the essence of like what it what's the purpose of life or what is our what is the purpose of existence? And no purpose. we always go back to like you know we all call go back to creation, the creation myth, and what that is. And and to me, like so much about the purpose of everything we are. I mean, that's that's the essence of it is creation, and it's what creation. we create and what and, we do, and, exactly. and then we have to. We all have a choice of what we yeah, create. Yeah, what I'm talking about that's, exactly. That's There's the no right I mean, or true and wrong or false. It's just about all creation. Wait, I wouldn't hear what Manny. What, yeah, Manny, what Manuel, Manny, had to say. Manuel, tell us. Well, I, you know, the 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 question of like saying, well, what human culture, what human society, what human community has been around the longest, is like asking, well, what part of the brain has been around the longest really it doesn't okay. really matter well. it's the whole brain is working together and it's evolving and uh, I'm reminded of a, of a video kind of lecture that I that came out in the mid 80s actually which was really incredible I came across it in 96 by a man named um, uh, Peter Russell and he released a very short video lecture half hour called the global brain and it was based on a book of his called The Global Brain Awakens. And there's a part of that where he says, in the gestation of the human fetus, the development of the brain in the cranial cavity is really about populating the cranial cavity with brain cells. And there's some development along the way, but really it's about a population explosion. And at about the point that you think there's not going to be enough oxygen for all the brain cells that there's going to you know there's not going to be enough room the population explosion stops and interconnectivity begins and a kind of internet is built up through the neural networks and pathways of the brain and that's what that's what becomes the functioning brain of the human and all of these different hemispheres play different roles the left and the right hemisphere are uh, working together to exchange information that neither side or the reptilian that preceded it all or the mammalian you know this is, these are all working together and to identify a particular region as the most valid or the one that brought the most to the table is completely missing the point of the entire system that had a plan for its existence before the first cell even came into the, uh, b before fertilization even occurred. And to me, that's kind of where we are right now, and that all of this turmoil and, and different culture bubbles that have really been maintaining themselves in isolation for tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years, are, are reaching their limits of what's useful for the integrity of that culture, and now we are birthing a global culture 
regarding the myth, the new myth that needs to be created, uh, Joseph Campbell, whose work I've followed uh, intently, daily, for the last 20 years, says you can't make up a myth. You can't predict a myth any more than you can predict what you're going to dream tonight. But there are functionaries within this system, within this family of humanity, within this family of Gaia, that have specific roles and humanity serves a kind of nervous system role. I think all mammals do. If you have a nervous system, you are participating in being a part of the nervous system of the planet. Just like the rainforests and arboreal forests are like the lungs and the days and nights are like the heartbeats and the seasons are like the breaths and the oceans and the rivers are like the circulatory system. We're kind of like a a, a nervous system, a global brain, if you will, and that our process in that is to, particularly with these uh, seed communities that you know consider themselves visionary and perhaps more evolved than the other cultural memes on the planet that have, are a little more archaic but have been around longer. I mean, cultural creatives are about 60 years old, so we're new. We're new kids on the block, but we think we have all the answers, and there's a functionary in the body called the white blood cell which you have a lot more red blood cells in the body than you do white blood cells but the white blood cells have a purpose and that's to fight off disease and, and creative people and it, uh, uh, whether they're in the arts or in business or technology um, those that have connected with their deeper purpose and eschewed if you will the, the kind of delights of the phenomenal world for a deeper connection to what their purpose is, they serve as like white cells and, and correctors of errors in thinking and being, and they work strategically. They're much more powerful. Yeah, kind of like Buckminster Fuller said, call me trim tab. A uh, trim tab is a, a part of the rudder on a ship that you can actually manipulate. You can't, you can't manipulate. There is no mechanism on the ship that can turn the rudder what you do is you turn a small rudder and then the large rudder follows suit and then the ship comes around and goes in the direction you want it. So on his gravestone is, is the, the phrase, call me trim tab. And so it's the people that are working um, with the most commitment to their mission that are employing uh, their minds in the most strategic ways, in the most efficient ways, and are working to influence the myths that are working to open themselves up to tell the stories that our global community needs. You can't make up the myth, but you can become a hollow bone. You can engage in practices that allow the mystery to flow through you unhindered by your ego or your own kind of cultural intentions and agenda. And then that that story, if you've got the if you've got the true story flowing through you, it will be picked up. It will be picked up by the people. It would be re rejected if it's not true, or it'll be completely taken in and revised and become the global myth, or the glo I call it a mythos, a, a worldview with, that incorporates the mystical dimension. And I think we're rewriting we're, that mythos right now. Like, we're yeah. pieces of the puzzle, and together and with these amazing minds, we can make this heaven on earth, and we can do it. We don't need any more politicians, sure. any any Russian, these epochs. No, if they would be conscious, none of this would be happening. None, none, but, but zero, any. Yeah, but thanks for that. But thanks for that. We are them. seeing, okay, this is what we don't want. And, and we agree upon a reality in which yes. we allow that to happen. Exactly. And we as a species can agree upon a different reality at yes. any point we wish. But the previous, you can't vilify the previous memes. I mean, mm. uh, all of these cultural mm. stages, they emerge out of a reaction to the previous stage that was that that took them to the next level. So it's this, this cycle, uh, dialectic upon. cycle of, of thesis antithesis, I'm going to reject your thesis, and then synthesis, in which the, the, the new, modern, progressive perspective becomes status quo, and then the new problems emerge, and then a new antithesis emerges, and that's the big thing that we're going through right now, is we're moving very rapidly from an old cultural meme that is... Uh, conventional, you might say, 
uh, preceding that was the more traditional mythic minded where you believe your myths literally we went into more of the scientific materialistic meme which is what is ruling the world right now and then this progressive meme emerged with the cultural creatives it's it's only a 60 year movement 75 year movement if you it's count short. yeah it's very short but it it's now well in the mid 90s it was probably about 35 percent of the population um, and it hadn't even existed prior to 1970, really. It just started emerging in 1970, so it's moving very quickly. And the way I believe that we transition that quicker is we take on shamanic practices and we, and we step into the excellence of our professions and our trades being with our insight being fueled by transpersonal realizations that, that will blend together in a chorus that is the new mythos and you can't you can't architect it it's just emerging like alan watts says a uh, uh, just uh, an apple tree apples and and we're just we're peopling and and the the earth is peopling and the people are having thoughts that they didn't they can't even claim credit for they can just <clears throat> respond to it and if you respond to it you float down the river um if you hang on to the rocks you get cut and die Beautifully, beautifully said. Uh, t so do you feel maybe the telling of this story, which is the meta story of this emergence, may be the story to tell? Uh, it's not the myth, but it's about the emergent myth and its antithesis and the cycle. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think a thousand yeah. years from now, people will be talking about this time and talking about the days of like, Wow, can you imagine going to Burning Man for the first time? But that was like, I mean, it, it a would thousand, be A thousand, you're saying a thousand? A thousand years from now, people will talk about going to Burning Man like going to the moon. I mean, it... it Even less than that. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm just saying when, when yeah, we yeah, have yeah, Festival Planet and the yes. historians are looking back at, like, <laughs> this time, it's like the Dark Ages, there's going to be a point in history when they're going to look at, like, the time when the shift happened and and everything started to go in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, part of the part of the issue right now is that... We're not only up against the the, ah. the culture because we're connected uh, culturally, but we're also up against the fact that our environment can't handle it anymore. And if we don't evolve, we we, we will die out as a species. It's a simple fact, and everybody is kind of connected <coughs> to that at that point. Mama, Let me ask you Ooh, all yes. this. Mm -hmm. What do you think the greatest achievement of a human existence is? That's Burning Man! <laughs> Creation. <laughs> Given it. Having a child, no. yeah. having a gift, creating. bringing bringing love to yeah, love, creating, yeah, inspiring. whatever, whatever yeah, that. What's the what's the greatest achievement of a of your love. life? I don't think that's a. I don't think it can be a a universal thing. It's different, different for each you know individual. in a sense. Yeah, I mean, to a to a degree, but I think uh, ultimately we have to, you know, it, it certainly isn't on our individual level the same for everybody right now right maybe in a thousand years from now we can look back and we can come up with one specific so you have, thing you're that given it was. a human you're given a human existence and what would be the most amazing thing you did with it exactly. i think just love to, <laughs> to really enjoy it Please. to really yes, enjoy right. all of it love. you know we see something wrong she was confused point, about her you know like if you you mentioned the apple tree apple tree's apple no, apple trees seed. We always stop at the fruit. They seed so that it, there's a perpetuation of more of the same. I think people, trees, people. We mm -hmm. continue to perpetuate life. The purpose of life mm -hmm. is life. Life begets life. And the gift is just in having, having the gift of existence, to exist. Yeah. As we're speaking now, um, I got a text <laughs> uh, just as I arrived here that my grandmother is passing away right now. Mm -hmm. And so my mother and her sisters are there, and uh, your, uh, your yeah, grandmother? my grandmother um, on my mother's side. And uh, so I've had this sitting with me the whole night as we've spoken. The purpose of life is life. It's not exactly celebration it. or anything else. It will continue to perpetuate. Exactly. Whether we get voted on or off as a species is up for grabs, but life continues. I and love it. And as a matter of fact, I was speaking with and we a friend of mine. A different body. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I was speaking with a friend of mine who studies something called, I think, theodism. And in that, the definition for sin is stagnation. 
which means just a lack of life, a lack of movement. That's to sin, is to be without life or movement. And so... And a lack of moving towards love. Well, just or resistance. more of the same, of existence. <laughs> to exist, to continue on. That's it. And it doesn't have to be yeah. having a child. It can be caring for another. Yeah. It can be it's flourishing it's another. Mm-hmm. It can be whatever it is, you know. And it doesn't have to be another human being. It could mm-hmm. be a cat. It could be, mm-hmm. you know, a plant. It could be whatever it is. It depends. That's where I think on the individual aspect, it, you know, whatever you bring, whatever that element Your that work, you bring towards your, it yeah. and you put towards it, that really resonates within you individually, then you know that you put that energy out towards the world and that is just as valid as anybody else's you know purpose or meaning or most important moment or any of that so the greatest human achievement really boils down to just being super present with whatever is bruce what's your what's been your greatest human achievement so far well thanks for asking i think it's been to reach a point where i get these flash insights that then I can act on and build in the world or make a story about. Uh, And my mind, I try to go to the very, very edge. So, you know, I asked the ether or the power to show me how life began. And I went on a, a beautiful revealed vision on that. Or I asked to be taken to the edge of space and I went there and all these sorts of things and just sort of the asking and then being as you say the open hollow bone vessel and then just receiving and then trying to interpret it and trying to make it into a story or a project or a venture or something like that and just uh, it's exquisite and then getting in the flow with what you need to do next so some of my projects go for 10 years and they're stepping stones that the universe is constantly putting in front and I'm taking those steps and then at the end of 10 years I look back at the flash vision I had and it's like oh my god this turned out so much more amazingly than I could have ever even the vision so I I guess I've become a believer that if you can have a fully turned on primate brain that has this amazing beautiful vision of something fully formed that that sends sort of shock waves or resonant waves out into the universe, into the future or the past, and it sets it up to become reality. So that's been my practice for about 30 years. And and I think that you just trust in it, and it just happens over and over and over again. These these visions come true. And you bring up a good point, because as, a, as humans, one of the gifts that we have, and I, 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 would, I would bet you that we have this above any other species in probably in the universe which is our superpower as a species is that we can reach into the void and pull out things that have never existed we can change reality simply by how we're viewing it you know at any particular moment and so it's our capacity to love and our capacity to create that that i think kind of sets us apart on some level because we can simply create anything we want and change reality at our whim and that gives us like the ultimate power i mean we are more powerful than any other species yeah, some might call it agency for right. example what would you do andros uh, to create your greatest human achievement i'm doing it <laughs> what is it uh, uh well i mean look at how we're spending our tuesday night like just this the fact mm-hmm. of the matter is, is that not too many humans get to do this. And the, and Absolutely. And the yeah. truth is, is that like you know, I'm spending my my entire existence right now creating art, and creating art for other people, and that's amazing. It's and it's it's it, the the ability to like come up with a concept, and then manifest that concept into reality, so other people can share uh, a, a singular vision. Like that, that's the power of that is just outstanding. Do you really create things for other people or are you create things for yourself? A little of both. Both. It's kind of hard to create for others mm. if it's not you. You know, it's like I always know. think about... Johan could speak to that. <laughs> I agree. I think it, it is even, both. Even, even yeah. Johan, I think that every person creates for himself. <laughs> yeah. Well, you create what you feel for what yourself other people would and then you have. And then you, you, know? then you, then you, then you give it away. 
and then you receive back from those you gave it away to the feedback and the reflectivity of what you created. Holy cow! Whoa. Falling star? Oh my what? god! That I was saw the that. most beautiful thing I've ever seen. What? I thought it was him. <laughs> that too. No, no it was. A, <laughs> did you see what I saw? Star? I just did. No, it wasn't just a shooting star. No, it, it wasn't just a shooting star. I don't know what it the fuck it was. It slid across and it just like left the trail. Yeah, that, it left the trail. Oh, I could hear so it. So what about if we just wake up? Across. What about if we just wake up like this consciously and we realize that we're we have just. An essence. Why won't we take an the essence mind. of of ourselves living in this fourth dimension, and then we live in different bodies, like Dolores Cannon says that we live in different dimensions, in different bodies, and we're experiencing this lifetime in different bodies, in different dimensions. That's why sometimes we get callings or or or, re or remembering things from different things, from different places, from past lives. So what about if we understand that work, that that beingness, that we're here just living and uh, representing something for a different dimension of ourselves so we can grow and they and we can grow in a different place and state of mind because scientifically it's it's starting to happen, you know, many uh, hypnotherapists they're starting to to have many information about us in a different dimension right here right now so that could tell us if that could come out plus our ancient um you know technologies that are starting to come out or stones are starting to come out that could be a little bit piece of the puzzle for us to reawaken to our true purpose which is more galactic and once we realize it that we have the power which i bet that most of us over here are feeling that the manifestation tool that, that that we have been handled this past year you know we're manifesting so fast and it's happening in a heartbeat you know and and, and many more things to come of the superhumans that we are that it's in, in in our past you know in mythology and all of these great things that everybody spoke about you know in in our past it, it's it's part of the reawakening which is talking about the first you know subject that we started to talk mm -hmm. about what would be your greatest human achievement in Me? this lifetime uh, uh -huh. i'll ask you Bo both us her. um you're already on i'm touching her yeah. man for me to leave it, it's like everything you know obviously i'm a mom so i can tell you you know just to see myself and my children Right. I could see myself also uh, as a solo, you know, uh, uh, because I think that also there's journeys for people just to come and, and like Sol was saying, just to create, do a job, do a so job that why, will bring why, why, more why, why to other people. Why would we change the, the? Why would we change the awakening? Because the awakening is like that will help us a little no, bit no, no. more to okay. understand and to feel to say, dude, this is the best thing because we need to understand yeah, but that we need to leave here now because we're in the zombie mode you know and that will help us so awakening to realize my, that there's okay, different so I'm making it more my, than this i make awakening in my mind is if you i'm gonna, gonna wake to the truth and why wouldn't we why would we change this awakening into there's no truth the truth is evolving evolving to the better that's it because there's no truth. It's not your truth, not <laughs> my truth, not his truth. We're just part of the game. Well, let's say, let's say, if we're going to the cosmic mode, then then let's say the Pleiadians or the Andromedans or the Asturians or the Arcturians, <laughs> they will say, okay, well, uh, like, if you ask, well, what happened here in this time? Like, well, it depends on the reality because everybody saw it in a different time and space and they did this and they did that. So everybody has a different point of view. I understand mm -hmm. your, your, your thing. But I think it will help us a lot because everybody's like, so what's out there and, and technology and this and that? Hey, if we would know already, 
they can appreciate and relax a little bit more because everybody's just running. Religion, this, that, wars. Come on, it's time. What, we have wars right now? Are you kidding me? Are we really letting the system to get away with it? But I understand your point again, honey. Yes, but Syrian, Iranian, Israeli. Yes, I understand your <laughs> no, point. No, 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 because no, if we no, don't no, help because... them, who's okay, going to no, help no, them? Da, 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 da. <laughs> One given to another. Look at the pie. It is pie. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. What is the pie? With the pie. This is it all. It is the achievement of mankind. And with this that, is it. Right here. You're and with that, of fruit. And with that, we'll, uh, we'll probably formally close Ojai Salon number three and have some pie. Oh, so yeah. thank you all. Oh, I heard the word Palladian, so I was like, bye. Is it true that humanity is already on the best possible path, carried along by the enormity of nature, and that we are accelerating towards some kind of ascension? This positive group of young people at Ojai Salon Number 3 seemed well prepared to take on this transformation, and through each of their good works, were well poised to make that come to pass. The salon ended with some beautiful improvised strings on the oud, guitar, flute, and voice by David, Golan, Johan, and Beth. If you would like to host a salon on themes of general uplift, hope, and possibility, and contribute your voices to the Levity Zone, please get in touch with us, reaching me at bruce at damer.com. Host a salon in your own home, on a hilltop, deep in the woods, or anywhere that inspires the discussion. Contact us at our website at www.levityzone.com and feel free to use all of our existing audio, photos, video, and writings to remix in your work. Thank you and see you in the next podcast.